In Washington, D.C., within the U.S. Court of Federal Claims, the Office of Special Masters hears and decides cases brought by individuals who claim injury or death of a family member from receiving certain routinely recommended childhood vaccines. Part of the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act of 1986. It is a no-fault compensation program designed to encourage vaccination, encourage vaccine manufacturers to continue making vaccines, and to compensate the small but significant number of people who are injured by a vaccine they receive. The court's jurisdiction is limited to vaccines that are recommended for routine administration to children, though filing a claim is not limited to children, and most claimants are adults. They're hard cases to deal with because you are dealing with people who almost 100 percent of the time are undeniably injured. It's, the issue is just what caused that injury. So we're trying to deal with very complex scientific questions. When initially created by the 1986 Act, special masters gave recommendations to the federal district court where the vaccine injury claim was filed. The original act had the special masters writing what you might call advisory opinions. That is, they would, they would, they would have a hearing, they would find facts, they would make conclusions. And the, the process of writing recommendations and findings was a bit unwieldy. When Congress decided to change the act, we really needed a court with nationwide jurisdiction. And there aren't many courts with nationwide jurisdiction, the Court of Federal Claims being one. It made sense to put us in, in with the Court of Federal Claims. The U.S. Court of Federal Claims has a long history. In 1855, Congress established the court's precursor called the Court of Claims. The primary motivation was to address claims brought by veterans of the Mexican-American War. Prior to the formation of the court, uh, petitions for redress were submitted to Congress, and the system became unwieldy. For more than a century, the court and its jurisdiction evolved as circumstances changed. In 1982, the Federal Courts Improvement Act renamed it the Court of Federal Claims. Special Masters were made part of the court in 1987 and the Office of Special Masters in 1989. So uh, when the, the change was made to put us in the Court of Federal Claims, they just kept the title. Here we function much more like trial judges. Because the vaccine injury program was created by federal law, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services is always the defendant, called the respondent, in these cases. The process begins when a petition is filed. It's received by the clerk's office of the court. This means that the clerk's office provides services, um, administrative, IT, uh, the operation support of clerk's offices to the Office of Special Masters in the same manner that we do for our judges. Cases usually are randomly assigned to a special master though Chief Special Master Val has authority to consolidate and assign cases as may be needed. Because of the overwhelming number of new cases that have been filed each year, I've organized the staff attorneys into a special processing unit. That frees up my colleagues from some of the routine day-to-day -day case management responsibilities and allow them to focus more uh, on the 20 percent of cases that don't settle and the a number of the cases that take more special management to get them to settle. About 70 to 80 percent of the cases that are filed in the program ultimately settle. Another 10 to 20 percent, 10 percent, maybe a little higher, are dismissed for some defect in the petition, uh, statute of limitations problems, you can't prove you got the vaccination, uh, can't find an expert to support the claim. And the other 20 percent are probably litigated in, in some measure, either at the FAC level or at, at the entitlement level. That means there's a hearing. In many respects, they look, they, look oh, like they look like a trial. We use the term hearing because we don't apply the rules of evidence that directly. Our hearings are all closed to the public. Um, and that's statutory, that information submitted by a party on a case is not open to the public. Witnesses come, they take a witness stand, they testify, their qualifications are reviewed if they're an expert. Uh, if they're a, a fact witness, we go over their fact testimony. Cross-examination is not required, but routinely is authorized the other party. The special master 
may or may not have a lot of questions for the, the uh, witnesses. And at the conclusion of the case, we, uh, we may or may not have post-hearing briefs. We almost always have pre-hearing briefs to clarify what issues are in dispute. To aid petitioners and the court, Congress created the Vaccine Injury Table. It lists covered vaccines, injuries that are scientifically or by policy associated with that vaccine, and the time period in which an injury had to have appeared. While the Court of Federal Claims and its Office of Special Masters is physically based in Washington, D.C. We have national jurisdiction. Uh, our cases allow us to travel and sit to hear proceedings throughout the country. Uh, so there's no regional limitation to where the court sits. We travel for the convenience of the parties. We recognize that many of our petitioners have been gravely injured. Whether a vaccine is responsible is the issue we have to decide. District courts are very important to the Court of Federal Claims because the Court of Federal Claims sits and hears its proceedings nationally and relies on district courts to host uh, proceedings and to conduct their proceedings in district court courtrooms. When an issue in dispute isn't clarified by the medical record, fact hearings are held. It also gives people an opportunity to have their case heard. Fact hearings are frequently done at the location where the petitioners reside. We also have entitlement hearings where experts come in and testify, uh, for the most part. And those may be conducted, again, where the petitioner resides or where it's most convenient to get the experts together, depending on the nature of their schedules, or they may be conducted here. We sometimes have had problems much more recently uh, with uh, uh, sequestration in particular. Uh, where some of our budget was sequestered. We have only a couple of areas of flexibility in our budget, and one is that travel expense. So we make uh, extensive use of video conferencing facilities. So petitioners sometimes appear by uh, video conference from their attorney's conference rooms or uh, another conference facility, but more often it's the experts who appear uh, by video conferencing. And nothing but the truth. I will. Okay, counsel, you may proceed. Dr. Jackson, in your expert report regarding injury to petitioner... The special masters are appointed by a majority vote of the Court of Federal Claims judges. Judges of the Court of Federal Claims are nominated by the President of the United States, confirmed by the United States Senate, and uh, appointed for terms of 15 years. The special masters serve four-year terms with provisions for reappointment. There are eight of them. It is a very scientifically intense, medically intense uh, program, and special masters have to develop an expertise in, in diverse fields, immunology, neurology, orthopedics, rheumatology, uh, pediatrics. The secondary relationship, other than appointing the special masters that the judges have with special masters, is to review their work. If special masters issue decisions and those decisions are not challenged by either party, they become final and enforceable decisions. If either party, however, is dissatisfied, either the plaintiff or the Department of Health and Human Services, who is always the defendant in a vaccine case, is dissatisfied with a ruling, the claim may be brought to the Court of Federal Claims, and the Court of Federal Claims sits in the position of a reviewing court for the Office of Special Masters. Funding to pay vaccine injury claims comes from a 75-cent excise tax on each dose sold of a vaccine recommended for administration to children. Manufacturers collect the tax and deposit it into a trust fund. Because the Office of Special Masters is supported financially by the Vaccine Trust Fund, we have to actually do a separate appropriations process for them and our clerk's office is very engaged in that process. Only a small portion of the fund is used to support the court. Primarily, the trust fund pays judgments in favor of petitioners. In fiscal years 2011, 12, and 13, the court rendered judgments for vaccine injury petitioners of about $630 million. In that same time period, the court received about four to 500 new vaccine injury filings each year. One of the interesting aspects of our program is we are the only statute that I'm aware of. We're losing litigants. You, you file a vaccine injury claim and you lose. Um, their attorneys and their fees and costs and their own costs associated with the petition are compensable. They're paid for out of the trust fund. 
Congress did this deliberately because they, they recognized this was such a new and unique area of law. They wanted petitioners to have the benefit of counsel to help them. Despite that provision, the court knows that some petitioners will file on their own without the help of an attorney or will hire an attorney with no experience in vaccine injury cases. We recognize that we are not the usual slip and fall or motor vehicle accident or the even, even the usual um, medical malpractice claim. So we have a website that contains sample filings. It contains the guidelines for practice. We also have our bar referral list there. So if you're looking for an attorney in Arkansas, for example, and you're in Arkansas, you can find an Arkansas attorney who, who is willing to take vaccine cases. In our system of law, a tort is a civil wrong for which damages can be collected. One side must prove the other at fault. The vaccine injury compensation program has been an experiment in tort reform. I think it's been a highly successful experiment. Petitioners have been paid over a billion dollars from the Compensation Trust Fund for in vaccine injuries that I don't think would have been compensable in any other court system in the country because we've removed the issue of fault or a traditional tort cause of action from this program.